my name is Joachim Gernack. I'm Head of Development and Research at Medicinals India Biotech. And I'm happy to be speaking at the Doctors' Federation for the World Global Summit on November 11th till 15th. Um, my topic will be uh, the comprehensive analysis of disease pathways and protocols for the management of severe and multisystemic conditions arising in COVID-19 and spike protein illnesses and long COVID. I'm part of the Long COVID Coalition Group, uh, where we are collaborating in research, in developing of treatment protocols, organizing conferences, and also publishing peer-reviewed papers to, to come up with uh, solutions for all these millions and patients and people suffering from these kind of conditions. In, in my presentation, I will start with viral entry and replication mechanisms because uh, this virus is not very well uh, known to most doctors, and so I want to build the bridge between symptoms, conditions, and the intricate, delicate, and detailed pathways. So here you see a, um, a flowchart that we developed where you see the uh, six phases of COVID conditions, starting on the upper left with the viral phase, hypersensitivity, hyperinflammation, hypercoagulation, and then leading on, on the right side to organ damages, epigenetic dysregulation, cancers, metabolic disorders, uh, autoimmune, and other conditions. SARS-CoV-2 is constantly shape-shifting and adapting and building new variants. So it's very important to take into account all different ways of cell surface entry or cell fusion mechanisms and replication mechanisms in order to stop the replication of this virus in the organism. So you see first virus proteases as a main target on the virus itself. Then the two big entry mechanisms, endosomal entry and cell surface entry. Fourth also is the SARS-CoV-2 acting as a bacteriophage. Um, then we have fifth filopodia formation, tunneling nanotubes and syncytia formation. The SARS-CoV-2 proteases as drug targets. We have been considering that in the formulation development for medicinals from the beginning on and of course with the main focus on the 3CL main protease of SARS-CoV-2. As an additional benefit, it showed that most of the molecules are able to inhibit also other proteases which are shown on this list. This slide you can see the two major entry mechanisms for SARS-CoV-2, the endosomal entry and the cell surface entry, which each require a different strategy of stopping entry and replication and it is important to cover both of them because the virus can shift between those two or even use both of them simultaneously um, in SARS-CoV-2 infections. Dr. McMillan has rightfully pointed out that at the moment we're looking at the endosomal entry mechanism and that hydroxychloroquine can be used here or any other uh, zinc ionophore drug and um, that is a valid idea, but we do see already a shift back to cell surface entry in some variants. So it's actually important to cover all of this. The selective pressure on SARS-CoV-2 and Omicron has led to now more than 3000 different variants that are documented. These variants are antibody evasive, and that's one of the main reasons for these mutations. But on the other hand, also each mutation or variant will enable the virus to dock to other host cell receptors, of which you see some on this slide, and these are the most common ones. On this slide, you see the selection of the nine molecules we are using in our formulation, which by now are um, confirmed by third parties all over the world and from many different uh, publications as top champions in viral uh, inhibition and many other pathways related to COVID-19. So a virus that is mutating at this rate, uh, you have to be anticipating that it will go also to other host cell receptors that were reported on earlier coronaviruses. And that is what we did here. And you see that these are the host cell receptors uh, where we have a lot of documentation that these molecules can block them from viral entry. In addition to target the virus proteases, and the host cell receptor is also necessary to inhibit the fusion enzymes, especially furin, because SARS-CoV-2 is, uh, as a special feature, has a furin cleavage site, which other coronaviruses don't have developed to this extent. 
And that's what makes SARS-CoV-2 so infectious, so inhibiting furin, TMP, RSS2, uh, endocytosis, and other mechanisms as well is uh, well documented. And uh, on the bottom you see the um, zinc ionophore properties of these molecules, which are very similar to hydroxychloroquine. Let us now have a closer look at the um, different body regions and organ tissues where SARS-CoV-2 is able to invade and infect them directly. Um, Omicron or any other SARS-CoV-2 virus and or the spike protein can get directly into these cells and create a lot of problems, especially endocellitis, endothelial inflammation, which uh, can cause then as a secondary condition lead to thrombosis and um, also hypertension. So the, the list of conditions resulting from this direct infection is very long. Here we can see some uh, pictures of a direct infection of cardiomyocytes. Same happens also in myocardium tissue. And uh, this is of course a very worrisome because it can lead to myocarditis, cardiac arrest, and uh, many other damages directly to the heart, which need to be prevented at all costs because the heart muscle cannot be restored so easily, if at all. Here we see direct infection of lymph nodes and spleens, which of course is in, in the core of the, of the immune system and not very beneficial, to say the least. Another very delicate region, of course, is the brain and central nervous system. And here we can see evidence that SARS-CoV-2 and Omicron and spike protein can, again, directly infect or invade neurons, neuronal tissue. And this can and will lead to neuro-COVID or post-COVID, long-COVID conditions. Um, so if you can observe brain fog, it doesn't mean that it can only be a temporary thing. We have a large amount of evidence uh, pointing into the direction of development of severe neurological diseases resulting from SARS-CoV-2 infection. So not only the endothelium in the lungs and in the respiratory system are being directly infected, but also the same happens in the, in the gut and the intestines which will of course lead there to a um, inflammation and inflammatory state. Plus it will cause the tight junctions uh, to be impaired and uh, cause the so-called leaky gut syndrome, which in connection to the next slide I'm going to show will be uh, even more worrisome. Dr. Carlo Bronia from Italy, one of our collaborators, was the first one to document and prove that SARS-CoV-2 can infect our own gut bacteria and cause a lot of inflammation and release of toxins in the intestines as a result. Plus these bacteria are working now and serving as a, as a reservoir for the uh, SARS-CoV-2 and especially are a suspect for viral persistence. The direct infection of gut bacteria will lead to dysbiosis and especially a depletion of butyrate producing gut bacteria, uh, which again has another consequence and that is the metabolization of amino acids as precursors for neurotransmitters and an uh, interruption of the uh, tryptophan pathways from the gut. Dr. Bronia has developed a treatment protocol uh, which uh, we will show later and at the end of this section of antivirals. Philopodia are finger-like cellular protrusions which normally perform cellular functions during development and migration of cells and other functions. But they can also form bridges for virus to move from infected to uninfected cells. In the case of SARS-CoV-2, the virus promotes the additional growth of these tentacles. This excellent paper describes all three possible cell-to-cell -cell transport mechanisms of SARS-CoV-2 virus and documents very well philopodia, tunneling microtubes and extracellular microvessels. From the same paper, on the upper left you see philopodia under the microscope and on the bottom left you see the standing um, tube is a TNT and on the right of that you see some philopodia just for comparison. So they are both simultaneously at play. Here we can observe philopodia connections and viral surfing. 
numerous membrane projections from different cells converge in a region of high viral load. Viral extrusion is when the membrane of the vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane. On the left we can see a vesicle containing 12 viral particles and the right picture shows the release of viruses from the vesicle. These findings support the hypothesis that filopodia are formed to promote the spread of viruses between the cells. The tunneling nanotubes are a little bit more handy for the virus because it can not only travel on them as a bridge but it can also travel inside them and also vesicles containing virus can travel inside the tubes and um, the scary thing is that also these nanotubes can transport prion proteins between neuronal cells and many other mechanisms to which we come in a later section of my presentation. Documented drug targets on TNT formation and filopodia formation are for TNT as a CD, CD38 inhibitors, which are quercetin and luteolin, or F-actin inhibitors, which are quercetin and curcumin. For the filopodia formation, the inhibitors are the same in both regions. One is myosin-2 inhibition, and the other one is casein kinase-2 inhibitors, which are bakelin, quercetin, luteolin, and epigallocatechin gallate. Here one of a few examples how, for example, quercetin can disaggregate the F-actin uh, that we find in the tunneling nanotubes. This example is for the inhibition of filopodia formation, suppressing myosin-2, and the epigallocatechin gallate can reportedly do that and be very helpful in stopping these mechanisms. Extracellular vesicles are nano-sized membrane-bound vesicles released from cells that can transport cargo, including DNA, RNA, proteins, viruses between cells as a form of intracellular communication. The spike protein of SARS-CoV-2 can be incorporated into extracellular vesicles. This is, of course, a problem because it will lead to shedding. Extracellular vesicles are very similar to lipid nanoparticles that are used in the vaccine to deliver the mRNA into the cells. EVs have pretty much the same functionality and can be um, interrupted or inhibited by blocking endocytosis. In this paper, it's described how epigallocatechin gallate is inhibiting extracellular vesicle release from platelets. This inhibition required the gallate group of epigallocatechin gallate. In this video, you can see another feature of SARS-CoV-2 and also many other viruses. It's called a syncytium formation or syncytia formation, in which, for example, the spike protein mediates a cell fusion between neighboring cells, which will then fuse together into a cell conglomerate with various cell nuclei and will serve as a reservoir for viral replication. This, of course, will leave a, a large number of dysfunctional cells uh, in a, so to speak, senescent condition that need to be cleared. And um, so if that happens to important cell formations, the damage is uh, very rapidly spreading and um, difficult to stop. Uh, you, you need to bring down furin and again endocytosis, membrane fusion mechanisms. It does not only happen in SARS-CoV-2, there's many other viruses that use many of the above described special features from filopodia, and nanotunneling, uh, extracellular vesicles and syncytia formation. It's not exclusive to SARS-CoV-2. The SARS-CoV-2 spike protein is sufficient to induce a rapid membrane fusion to produce syncytium, which could readily internalize multiple lines of lymphocytes to form typical cell in cell structures remarkably leading to the death of internalized cells. Here on this, this slide you see the comparison between the SARS virus from the first SARS pandemic and the SARS-CoV-2 current virus in its ability to form syncytia. This particular paper highlights the significance of the S1, S2 furin cleavage site in SARS-CoV-2 infection, particularly in case of syncytia formation. So the approach to have furin as a drug target is not only helping in infection of normal cells by normal uh, host cell receptor and membrane fusion, but it's also very helpful to inhibit 
syncytial formation. We, of course, have included the strongest furin inhibitors possible in our protocol. Here we are summing up again the whole matrix of the virus protease inhibitors and the host cell receptor blockers. Here on the second page, uh, we have the list of all the um, fusion enzyme inhibitors and um, everything described in, uh, in the presentation today is pretty much all marked here. Plus, uh, which I haven't talked much about, is the intracellular replication mechanisms, zinc ionophore and others that will also be very helpful of course, this uh, whole presentation can be downloaded from our website at medicinals.com and we happily share all our knowledge with anybody interested. In this slide, you see the different products involved in this protocol. And uh, especially in Medicinals 9, we have nine molecules with a high drug synergism. And uh, that alone can cover almost everything described in this presentation, especially on antivirals. The molecules you see on the right, or the dietary supplements, have been proven to work well together in combination with medicinals, also covering other angles of the disease which were not described in this first part of the presentation, which come in a second presentation on the rest of the more than 140 pathways we still have not even looked at. In order to really get these molecules to work, um, you need to ensure that the bioavailability is enhanced to a point where this really can start to work potently on the mechanisms described. On this slide, you see the results from a preclinical trial where we induced a myocardial infarction in rats. And you see here three different marked horizontal columns. The upper one is yellow, that is untreated animals. The middle one is orange, that is animals treated with nine molecules, but in powder version, same dosage as in medicinals. And the bottom one, the green one, is a, the original version, now bioenhanced formulation that we are using today. And if you look at the values of these markers, it's considerably um, better on the lower column, in the green column, than compared to the normal version of these supplements. So if you want to use supplements, make sure that they are um, in, the, in the right bioavailability, with the right potency. Otherwise, it will not uh, give the desired effect. And that is why many medical doctors are not really interested in supplements and nutraceuticals, because they, in their experience, they don't work as well as pharmaceutical drugs. So we have changed that. Glutamate, pyruvate, transaminase, GPT, is an enzyme usually indicating liver damage, heart cells damage, kidney damage, and muscle damage. The yellow bar is untreated animals. The green bar is the conventional supplements, uh, nine ingredients as a powder supplement, and the blue column is medicinals nine. And you can very clearly see how much better medicinals nine was able to protect the various organ systems from damage. After all this extensive preparation work, we finally were able by the end of 2020 to go into human clinical trials, WHO reg registered. It's a phase two clinical trial on acute COVID and uh, with an extension on 45 days to see how well the treatment could prevent long COVID developments. Here you see one slide of the many results we could obtain in this study on the viral replication efficacy, so the virucidal efficacy of medicinals 9 in human clinical trials. And we could reach a elevation of PCR CT values of 1.75 per day. And that was in the Delta variant. Here a patient report uh, from June 2022. So that is Omicron. And uh, you can see these two tests. So the PCR test on June 23 showed a CT value of 16, which means a very high viral load. And after four days, it was cleared. So here we are looking at a very high elevation of CT value per day, which is the only reliable marker to measure a virucidal efficacy. And I think that this is pretty unreached. And uh, I, I think it is due to the fact that 
Omicron has shifted to other host cell receptors and other fusion mechanisms, which for distance is blocking very efficiently. But now to make absolutely sure that we keep working on the latest variants, we are just enrolling now in another patient clinical trial in India on acute COVID and see how well uh, we will work against the new variants, the BA275 and the XBB, which are at the moment prevalent in India. Here, one of the latest studies from China where the scientists demonstrated that as few as five additional conversion mutations based on BA5 or BA2.75 could completely evade most plasma samples, including those from BA5 breakthrough infection. These results suggest that current herd immunity and BA5 vaccine boosters may not provide sufficiently broad protection against infection. So my last thoughts on Omicron and on the strategies on how to deal with a viral infection, of course, is that you have to use, first of all, a virucidal product that is able to stop the re fusion replication and spreading of that virus in the organism because it does cause a lot of different problems in practically all organ regions. Uh, and most of all, it is um, immunosuppressive and damages the immune system. So that will lead to immune, immune deficiency and repeated infections. So the more often you get infected with SARS-CoV-2, the more damage will occur in most patients. This is not a pure hypothesis. It can be seen right now in practical settings, especially in the UK, where the healthcare system is on the brink of collapse, and in the US, where the children hospitals are filling up, and in some states, um, the National Guard has to probably move in right now to build uh, tent structures in front of the children hospitals because of opportunistic respiratory infections which in the second part of this presentation, I will shine a light on how that comes about and what can be done about it. As we can consider the question, if there's viral persistence in long COVID uh, as settles, of course, this is another factor also for long COVID patients, is to make sure that the viral persistence is eradicated in order to stop the fueling of ongoing other conditions. So if you're interested in any further details, you can go to the website of the Long COVID Coalition. There you find around 12 to 14 hours of uh, recordings of our past conferences. You can go to medicinals.com, our website, where you can find a lot of information on um, medicinals itself and the protocols. I'm very happy to see you at the Doctors' Federation for the World Summit from November 11th till November 15th. Thank you for your attention.